bring up the bodies. 1536, Anne Boleyn is arrested. My lord, he says, do you have the warrant? Norfolk flourishes the parchment. When they enter Anne's rooms, her gentlemen servants are just rolling away the great tablecloth, and she's still seated under her canopy of estate. She's wearing crimson velvet, and she turns the perfect ivory oval of her face. Hard to think she's eaten anything. There's a fretful silence in the room, strain visible on every face. They must wait, the councillors, until the rolling is performed, till the folding of the napery is accomplished, and the correct reverence is made. So you are here, uncle, she says. Her voice is small. One by one, she acknowledges them. Lord Chancellor, Master Treasurer, other councillors are pushing in behind them. Many people, it seems, have dreamt of this moment. They have dreamt that Anne would plead with them on her knees. My Lord Oxford, she says, and William Sands. How are you, Sir William? It is as if she finds it soothing to name them all. And you, Cromwell, she says. She leans forward. You know, I created you. And he created you, madam, Norfolk snaps. And be sure he repents him of it. But I was sorry first, Dan says. And I am sorry more. Ready to go? Norfolk says. I do not know how to be ready, she says simply. Just come with us, he says. He, Cromwell. He holds out a hand. I would rather not go to the tower. The same small voice, empty of everything except politeness. I would rather go to see the king. Can I not be taken up to Whitehall? She knows the answer. Henry never says goodbye. Once on a summer's day of still heat, he rode away from Windsor and left Catherine behind. He never saw her again. <laughs>